This is the Crosley Spinneret model I don't have any previous knowledge of in terms of its performance and audio quality. It's reminiscent of those 60s and 70s briefcase turntables. Easily take your favorite vinyl and convert them to digital. Just plug in the USB cable, play your record, and watch as the spinneret creates digital files in your computer. Three speed turntable, USB enabled, portable audio ready, which is just a fancy way of saying it has a line level input. And a full range speaker, well, that will have to be tested and evaluated whether or not that claim is correct. Headphone jack, and then this very misleading United States flag plastered on the side of this box. If you look closely at the fine print, it says, Designed and engineered in the USA, made in China. I believe there are two different models, one in red, which is what I received, and another in a blue. And the other side, which looks to be in Spanish and French. And an area for you to put the serial number and the Dino replacement, which is mentioned as being an NP5. I really was planning on passing this up until I noticed this has what appears to be an Audio Technica AT3600 magnetic cartridge. There's the instruction manual and the version 2.6 of whatever is supposed to be contained on this disc. Recording software and installation. Not much in the way of troubleshooting because with this unit being as cheap as it is to not only manufacture but purchase, you'd just be better off either returning it to the store if you're still in the return policy or just throwing it out or I should say recycling it and buying a new one if something should ever happen to it. Let's see, okay, so they put a piece of foam in here actually adhered to the back with glue and uh, it's one of those cheap generic switch mode power supplies because those power supplies using an actual transformer to convert the AC to DC voltage I believe have been outlawed by the EPA for whatever reason I'm sure for some mundane and little known reason and so instead you have these pieces of garbage now that are replacing transformer-based power supplies. And the one problem with these switch mode power supplies, aside from being incredibly cheap and flimsy, they output so much interference. If I were planning on keeping this, I would be inclined to tie a knot in this cord as a makeshift strain relief. So that connector does not look the least bit sturdy or tolerant of wiggling and movement. Just have this little keyhole for the cord to run out of. And there's the obligatory glossy plastic. It's quite interesting that nowhere in the documentation is it mentioned that you really should use a separate stylus for playing 78s, but this does have three speed mode, 78, 45, and 33 and a third. And because this is so incredibly cheap, this is just a plastic platter. And then someone's idea of anti-slip material, just little rubber stickers put on the top. This actually is spring dampened. I was just removing the tape from the 45 RPM adapter and then I was placing it down and realized that the whole back portion of the turntable pushes down. So it is spring dampened. 33, it's set to on, and I believe it's automatically engaged. Oh, that sounds lovely. You don't hear the motor, but you do hear the interference. The speaker, turn it down a bit. Oh, that sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm telling you why, because if you break her heart, In spite of that deeply irritating interference heard on the speaker whenever placing the tone arm to play on the record, and you can even hear it during certain portions, quieter portions of the audio, 
have to say the audio fidelity is very surprising and uncharacteristic of these otherwise very cheap and unassuming Crosley portable record players that seem to be all the rage come Christmas time at the big department stores. I'll try playing this one here and you'll hear the bass response. I turn the tone all the way down because as is typically the case with these very cheap speakers putting the tone all the way up just results in a very shrill treble rich but lacking in bass sound that isn't very pleasing but if you turn it down and just bring it up just a notch actually sounds very good and this is turned all the way up Here's a Johnny Mathis LP. Let's see, it's quite a bit larger than the player, but it is accommodated. It will be played as you would expect for something offering 33 and a third playback. It's a mystery I cannot explain. Only blues I got are heartaches and pains. And she's gone, 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 gone. On the right side of the unit is a switch for changing between phono and aux input modes using the Three and a half millimeter jack, USB output, which is labeled PC, headphone output, and then this interesting artifact, just a blank there, there's nothing that I can see. If you're considering purchasing this to connect to a larger pair of speakers, can't do that unless you somehow use the headphone output, and that probably wouldn't offer the best quality. Believe it or not, the cartridge and stylus used on this Crossley Spinneret from a reputable brand, Audio-Technica, it's a conical or spherical 0.6 mil stylus. The benefit of having a conical stylus helps to improve, or should I say reduce, the surface noise and wear because they don't track as much in the grooves as something like an elliptical stylus. As a consequence of that, you also lose some of the high frequency sounds because it's not fully riding in the grooves and the groove walls. But the consequence of that would probably be barely audible on speaker or a speaker such as this. However, what I'm really concerned about is how it sounds and whether or not that annoying interference will make itself known when connecting this to a USB connection on your computer and recording the audio that way. Because if so, then this would be totally useless for transferring records to digital because you're going to be hearing 60 hertz hum or whatever that actually may be, probably from that stupid switch mode power supply in your final recorded audio files. Just listening, it's not all that audible and it can be overlooked, especially when playing 45s which are customarily pressed at a much louder volume than their LP counterparts, but you can still hear it during, for example, the leading groove of each song. See, you can still hear it. And uh, don't bounce the table, it skips quite a bit. Now, after connecting the USB cable, which is notably cheap and flimsy feeling, should work nonetheless did detect it and install the drivers and that CD that was included that claimed to include audio editing software just as I assumed has just audacity and probably some grossly outdated version not that it really matters all that much and the user manual and the link to the Crosley radio website which is totally pointless because you have a paper manual which why would I want to read one on the computer when I have a paper manual and Audacity, well, that's free. So, suppose they just threw in that CD as a sort of value-added proposition. Nothing else, really. I'll note to self, don't place a record player you wish to transfer accurate copies of your vinyl to digital next to a running air conditioner unit. I was wondering why it sounded like there were motorboats running in the background. And then I realized that it was picking up the vibration of the air conditioners, compressor, and fan.
I must say that the USB digital to analog converter, or I suppose in this case the analog to digital converter, is of excellent quality. In fact, it sounds nearly identical to the output of something like my Audio Technica ATLP60, which uses the identical cartridge and stylus. And I have to say that if you want the most accurate rendition of your vinyl, listen to the USB output. Playing with the built-in speaker sounds about right, but it's obviously only in mono. And using the built-in 3.5mm headphone output is an effort in futility. Yes, it works. No, it doesn't work really all that well. Bass is excessively loud very very weak treble and I even with turning the tone control all the way up to compensate because remember when playing through the built-in speaker the audio is very shrill so you have to turn the tone down all the way just to bring it back to a palatable balance between treble and bass but then when you're using headphones it's so bass laden that you have to turn this tone control all the way up and even then it's just too bass heavy and these headphones are pretty true to life in their audio and sound reproduction so if you want to hear the most accurate rendition of the sound with headphones then you'll have to engineer some way of recording or listening to the input and yes I'm sure some rotary phone enthusiasts are getting ready to pick up their keyboards and behead me with them with the condition that this poor rotary phone is in but it's not a museum piece it's used so he's leaving the life he's come to know just to satisfy a curiosity I've had since opening this and finding out about its aux input capabilities I don't have anything with a line level output readily accessible. What I'm going to do is plug something into the aux input, which is to aux in. And if I touch the tip of this, hear that interference again. And I'm going to try recording and seeing if it's recording from the line input, which sure enough it is. So there you go. Proved here on video that you can use this not only to transfer your vinyl to digital files, but anything with a 3.5mm output, considering the great many laptops and even computers that are lacking something as basic and simple as a 3.5mm audio input, which thankfully this laptop has, but I know a great many don't. We've got trouble, something's just not right. Just this morning you cried. You said that something's bound to break this time. As it turns out, the switch labeled on and off is not for turning the power on and off to this unit. It's actually for disabling or enabling the auto stop functionality. And it's a good thing that this actually has that ability because as you'll see, when it's set to auto stop, it stops prematurely. See, it still has grooves on the record to play. <coughs> that problem can be ameliorated just by s setting the switch to off. And the record you will see continues to play, which is a bit confusing and counterintuitive because it's set to off now and it's still spinning and it didn't detect that I placed the tone arm in its resting position so to turn this off now you need to switch this to on I find that mildly amusing given there's an Amazon review of this turntable that said that their on and off switch was wired in reverse when it likely wasn't it's just that it exhibits the aforedescribed issue with the auto stop and on and off so off means on and on means off in this turntable, at least when you want the auto stop to be disabled. Time to learn of what lurks below the surface, or in this case the platter. I remove the C-clip, and the platter should 
remove when I feel the rubber belt. So there's a very cheap plastic platter and the belt and the motor. But I don't, and there's also some lithium grease on here. But I don't see any way to adjust the speed if there happens to be some sort of issue pertaining to it. Something that isn't mentioned in the manual, though I feel it certainly should be, as well as in the specifications online and elsewhere for the Crosley Spinneret is the tracking force or weight of the tone arm. I have a scale here useful for measuring small amounts of weight. I'll place this on it and you can see it's reading about 6.4 grams and some will say that this isn't being correctly measured because this doesn't use a true counterweight just a metal spring back there. Now I'm giving it a fair shake here by actually putting this below the surface that normally would be where the records sit. The scale is now reading more or less the same weight 6.6 .6 grams and then compare that to just placing it up here on the top and putting it on uh, look 6.4 grams again so that's a very high tracking force on the unnecessarily high side considering that this stylus tra is recommended to track at around three and a half grams if you're willing to look past the fact that this Crosley spinneret record player may quite possibly prematurely wear out your vinyl collection. I have to say I'm very surprised with the tonal characteristics and fidelity that is most oftentimes overlooked on portable units. Sure this isn't a Technics SL1200 and you won't get anything close to the sort of sound quality and characteristics you would with a very high-end model turntable. When you're all done playing your records you just fold the unit up Take it along with you wherever you want or put it in the closet. Almost totally portable if it weren't for the fact that it requires a 12 volt DC input and does not have provisions for DC battery operation.